Hi guys, Harry here. Welcome to Scrap Science. For the past ages, I've thought that having nitric acid as a chemical for the lab would be uh, very nice to have, uh, simply because nitric acid is an excellent oxidizer, an excellent acid. It's just really useful all around. Uh, but it's a little bit tricky in Australia because nitrates of any kind uh, they're illegal to buy over the counter so we have to go about extracting nitrates or nitric acid from other stuff which I'm gonna have a go at today I think a bunch of people have asked me to do this and I've had this idea for a while so finally today we're gonna get around to doing that so what we're gonna try extracting the nitrates from turning into nitric acid is uh, compost uh, it's not just any compost this is grass clippings because uh, I've got this compost bin that uh, when we mow the lawn we chuck all of our um, grass clippings into it and the stuff at the bottom which is all of this stuff like all this uh, just in there all that kind of brown disgusting stuff uh, that's been sitting at the bottom for close to 10 years I think that's like over half my life and hopefully in those 10 years, it's been open to air and everything, hopefully the uh, nitrifying bacteria, I think they're called, they've done their magic and hopefully converted any nitrogen content that is in the uh, grass clipping compost into nitrates, which we should be able to extract. There is the possibility that this doesn't contain any nitrates at all, which wouldn't be too good. Uh, that's probably the case though. If that is uh, what happens in the end, uh, maybe I'll just try this experiment again later and uh, find something that it does actually contain uh, nitrates in it because this probably doesn't but we're gonna have a go anyway and to increase our chances I've also grabbed a bunch of uh, potting mix I'm not sure if it contains nitrates hopefully it does that'd be really nice uh, but just in case this doesn't contain nitrates we just got a bit of extra chance uh, of getting nitrates out of both of these if we use both of them at the same time so first things first all nitrates are soluble so if we just fill these up with water we should be able to dissolve all of the nitrates present in both of those and some other stuff which we'll separate out later and so filled up with water hopefully uh, all of the nitrate content will dissolve and uh, maybe I'll leave this overnight it's probably overkill because the nitrates should dissolve pretty quickly but I've got nothing else I can do today it's getting pretty late so I might as well we're back the next day and all of the solubles content in the uh, compost and the potting mix should have dissolved so we'll filter all that out and we should be left with our solution of all the soluble content of both of these and just finishing off filtering now uh, that is our solution containing all of the soluble stuff from our grass clippings and everything um, Still got a lot more in this container uh, that we've got to filter through, but this should be all ready to go for the next step. Uh, I took a couple of drops out of that and put it on a uh, watch glass. Probably can't see there. Uh, see if we can get it to focus. Uh, there are a couple of little needle-shaped uh, crystals around the edge of the uh, where the water's evaporated which is a good sign that there are nitrates present so that's pretty promising uh, right, we'll move on so what we're going to do next with our solution is all of the anions that are present in there uh, so that'll contain all of our nitrates we'll convert those into their corresponding acid now for that we're going to use some electrochemistry uh, we've done this before if you remember my video on making uh, sulfuric acid from fertilizer, we're going to be doing the exact same thing. We put a big solution in here. Uh, we stick an electrode in each one of these containers. This is a porous pot. Uh, as a diaphragm uh, membrane between the two half cells. And then if we uh, shove current through the, the cell, uh, cathode in this pool of liquid and the anode in inside this clay pot here, all of the uh, anions from the uh, what we're going to put in are going to be dragged over by the uh, positive charge on the anode 
and they'll be converted into their corresponding acids. So I've already gone ahead and put a bunch of water in our uh, clay pot here, ready to make the acid, and we will pour our grass clipping solution into where we're going to put the cathode. And so I've put the thing in a box, uh, I've poured all of our, or we'll call it the nitrate solution, into our cathode compartment, and we've got the distilled water in our anode compartment, graphite electrodes in each, ready to go. Uh, we've got positive going to the anode, negative going to the cathode. Like I said before, the positive charge on the anode will drag all the anions across and into the distilled water, and uh, it'll split the water into oxygen and hydrogen ions, so it'll generate acids, and uh, I'll just connect these up to the power supply so that we can start. So it's all wired up to the power supply now, and I can show you, instead of uh, having the multimeter in uh, in series with the electrolytic cell so that we could measure the current, I've actually gone and got this little um, voltage and current panel meter so that we can actually, if I shade that a little bit more, you can see exactly what's going on. Like if I connect the, uh, the cell to five volts, you should see they are five volts and we've got 60 milliamps flowing to start with. I might uh, connect it up to 12 volts actually to start off with just to get the reaction going. So there we are, look at that. 300 milliamps round about at 12, around 12 volts. Let's see if we can see any. Yeah, we got a little bit of uh, hydrogen coming off the cathode there. So that's very nice. To start with, we're not going to get very much current flowing uh, simply because we've got uh, distilled water, or close to distilled water anyway, in um, the anode chamber. And as soon as the anions start getting dragged across through the porous pot, uh, we'll generate some electrolyte in there, and that'll make the whole thing conductive and the current should rise quite dramatically. Now the reason we're doing this at this stage uh, isn't actually to generate our final product, uh, nitric acid. It's actually just to acidify all of the anions that are in the original solution. And then we're going to get some calcium carbonate and react it with the acidic solution. And that should precipitate out all of the anions that aren't nitrate. So the only thing that will be in solution after we precipitate out all the other anions will be calcium nitrate. At which stage we'll do this process again in order to generate our actual pure nitric acid. It's a couple of minutes later and you can already see that the current was at 300 milliamps before and we're at 350 now. And at this stage we can definitely see some uh, hydrogen bubbles forming. Uh, hopefully it doesn't foam up too much in the end. And uh, we're actually able to see, if I shake that around a bit, you can see all of the oxygen bubbles coming off the anode. Uh, might also contain a little bit of chlorine coming off the anode as well. The good thing about this reaction is that it does actually eliminate all of our uh, chloride ions. So all the chloride ions that were present in our catholite uh, as they're dragged across into the anode chamber. Uh, the anode in an acidic solution will actually convert those chloride ions to chlorine gas rather than uh, hydrochloric acid as it would with all the other anions. So there's probably quite a bit of chloride content in there and it'll effectively get rid of it. Uh, more outside so all the chlorine that gets generated we don't need to worry about because it's happening so slowly and it's all just blowing away. Nearly an hour on and uh, put that in the shade you can see uh, we've got over half an amp flowing now and uh, if we dip some pH paper in here you can see that it's starting to turn a little bit acidic in the anode chamber which is exactly what we're looking for. So I think I'm going to leave this going overnight, maybe even a couple of days, just to make sure that all of the nitrate content that's in our catholite gets dragged over and turned into acid. It's now been running for three days. It's gone very well. You can see the, the carbon anode has, I mean, it's, it's fallen apart a little bit, but it's done way better than I expected. Uh, been running steadily at 120, 130 milliamps on five volts the last few days. Hopefully all of the anions present in our original solution have been pulled into the anode chamber. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is, seeing as the carbon anode is still looking pretty good, uh, I'm going to empty all of that out and replace it with some more of our um, 
grass clipping, uh, hopefully nitrate solution, and then hopefully we'll be able to get a little bit more uh, pulled into the uh, sample of acid that we've got going. And there we go, everything has been replaced. Uh, I mean, the, the catholite's been replaced. We've kept uh, all of the stuff that's in our anode chamber. I added a little bit of water to the anode chamber uh, just because it was getting a bit low and I don't know, we want to maintain a high surface area for that carbon to be touching the water so that we can uh, prolong its life to the greatest extent we can. Uh, we've got our used grass clipping solution. Well, I mean, it should be considerably basic now that it's been in the uh, cathode compartment for a while. And you probably see there, it's a little bit lighter than our original solution. And I don't really know what's going on there, but it does smell quite strongly uh, of just bad. Uh, there's a bit of a, a hint of ammonia in there, which is a good sign because if there was any ammonia in there, all the, um, the nitrifying bacteria should have oxidized that. Uh, well, most of it anyway, obviously not the stuff that's still in there, but most of that should have been oxidized to nitrate, which is uh, very promising. Anyway, I'll leave this running for another three days or so, uh, and hopefully by then, in our anode chamber, we should have twice the concentration of whatever acids we had before. Hopefully, uh, a little bit of nitric acid will be in there as well. So it's been running for six days now. We've gone through quite a bit of our soluble grass clippings uh, stuff and so I think whatever's in there has hopefully got uh, a reasonable content of nitrates and so I think we're going to take it out now and filter it off and continue extracting all the nitric acid. Oh, it does very much stink all of this stuff. Oh, it's like the worst thing I've ever smelt. Anyway, we've got our um, acid from the anode chamber, all filtering now, all of the carbon powder uh, that had come off the electrodes. You can see the anode over here kind of fell apart a bit. Did a lot better than I thought, but uh, it did, did fall apart eventually. Uh, that's the cathode there, so it's coated in some kind of weird organic stuff. I've got no idea what that is. Our cathode chamber solution is nice and basic, as you'd expect. Uh, so I'm gonna add this to all of the other um, solution that I've already used, uh, all of this stuff. I'll save until next time I do this if I want to get any more uh, nitrates out of the grass clippings solution. Uh, but all of this, uh, I'll see if I can figure out a way to get rid of that. Maybe I'll evaporate it down if I can get rid of the smell. But no, it's, uh, it's looking all good. Uh, as soon as this is finished filtering, I might clear off all this desk so that we can uh, keep working on our solution here. I mean, seriously, this just smells like oh, ammonia mixed with it's bad. So there we go. Finally, we have all of our acid from the electrolysis before. Uh, it's still a little bit murky. Uh, I don't know. There's some, probably some really tiny um, graphite particles in there from the anode. Um, but what we're going to do now uh, to get rid of all of the anions that are in there that aren't nitrates, uh, we're going to use some calcium carbonate right, to react with all the acid and then all of the um, calcium salts that will be present after that should precipitate out except for the nitrate. Um, there shouldn't be any chloride in here or any like bromide or anything because um, the electrolysis should have destroyed uh, those ions, so pretty much everything except for the nitrate hopefully will precipitate out once we add some uh, calcium carbonate. The calcium carbonate that I have is I don't know, garden lime and it's only it's not very pure. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, dissolve it and then um, re-precipitate it back out uh, using some hydrochloric acid and some sodium carbonate. So let's do that now. So we have a bit of dilute um, hydrochloric acid and we're just going to add scoops of this until it stops bubbling and then we'll have a solution of calcium chloride that we will be able to precipitate back out some more pure calcium carbonate. Well look at it go. Whoa. Nice. Actually it looks pretty cool doesn't it? So 
So now that that's all reacted, we should have a solution of calcium chloride. Uh, I'll go ahead and filter that off. And while that's filtering, I'll make a fairly concentrated solution of sodium carbonate so that we can re-precipitate back out all of our calcium carbonate. And so we have our filtered calcium chloride solution here and uh, some nice hot um, sodium carbonate. And so if we mix them together, we should see some calcium carbonate precipitate forming. And yep, you can see that just sitting at the bottom there, all of our calcium carbonate. And so now if we filter all of this out again, we will be able to get all of our uh, calcium carbonate precipitate out of that water. Now it's being a little bit difficult to filter, but I think we are getting there. Uh, so we have quite a bit of calcium carbonate. I have got a little bit of it here, and I'm just going to show you. Um, if we add it to our acid that we got in the last step, uh, what this should do is react. Hopefully, yeah, there we go, and that will give uh, hopefully a bunch of precipitates um, that will be able to filter out, and uh, that'll remove everything that's not nitrates because calcium nitrate should be soluble, but any other uh, calcium salt that we'll be able to make uh, should precipitate out, and we'll filter that out just a little bit later. So finally, we've added a bunch of our calcium carbonate and we have neutralized all of the acid in here. So everything, you can see it all swirling around in there, everything that's not nitrates will have precipitated out as a calcium salt and everything that is a nitrate is now uh, calcium nitrate. So that should be in solution. So if we filter out all of the solid impurities, we should be left with a calcium nitrate solution, which we can then turn straight back into nitric acid by the same method that we were getting acids from our um, grass clipping solution. Now you can see all the stuff that uh, wasn't nitrates that was in solution now. And uh, in here, we should have just our calcium nitrate. And there we have our relatively pure uh, calcium nitrate solution. Uh, you can see deacidifying it uh, seems to have you know, cleared it up quite a bit, which is good. It means it's a whole lot more pure than the acid we had before. I'm going to take a little bit of the solution out and uh, we'll put it on this watch glass. This is just to see if there actually is any calcium nitrate because uh, once this all evaporates off, we should be able to see the salt crystallize out. And another test we can do to check if there's still uh, calcium in solution is uh, I've got another solution of sodium carbonate just here. So if we add another little bit of this, we should see a precipitate form. Yeah, nice. So there is quite a bit of uh, calcium in solution, apparently. Uh, hopefully all of that is uh, calcium nitrate. And also, yes, our evaporation on the watch glass shows that there is quite a bit of soluble stuff. Uh, I mean, I can't really tell what it is, but hopefully a bunch of it is calcium nitrate. So now that we've confirmed that there's uh, something soluble in there, um, what we can do is do a, a test for nitrates. Uh, this is a little bit difficult uh, because you can't just precipitate out a nitrate. They're pretty much all soluble. So what we have to do, what I've got here is a bit of our um, hopefully nitrate solution mixed with some solution of sodium hydroxide. Uh, all of the calcium has precipitated out as calcium hydroxide. That's why it looks all milky, but that's all right. The nitrate should still be in solution. And so what we'll do is we'll put a bit of a uh, pH paper over the top and add just a little bit of aluminium. And that should uh, reduce the nitrate to um, ammonia, which should uh, bubble out and then uh, hopefully turn our pH paper uh, blue. So if I just add a few of these, hopefully we'll get a little bit of ammonia coming off. 
so you yeah, see this um, wet piece of PH paper if we put it over you can see I'm pretty sure that's just uh, like all the the hydroxide solution like spitting up onto the uh, the paper so I, I really can't tell I might just cut this bit out I think no actually uh, if I put a bit of paper over it to protect my nose from the uh, the, the spitting hydroxide everywhere uh, if I give it a, a smell I can definitely definitely smell the ammonia coming off that so that is an excellent excellent sign that there is definitely nitrate content in our solution here so that's very good I'll continue uh, trying to extract the nitrate as nitric acid so now the method we're going to use to turn this stuff back into uh, nitric acid is exactly the same as what we used to remove all the anions from uh, our grass clippings and we're going to put all of this solution into this container. I've got another nice small uh, clay pot to separate it out with uh, just because we're doing this on such a much smaller scale uh, and we'll put an anode inside the pot uh, and that'll attract all of the nitrate ions and convert them into nitric acid. So I'll get that all set up and we'll start electrolyzing again. So everything is set up. We've got our calcium nitrate solution out here and we have some distilled water in the pot just there. Uh, we've got this graphite electrode connected to positive, that's our anode, so it'll attract all of the, uh, the nitrate ions and our cathode that's connected to negative and so if we connect this up, we should see on the uh, current meter, I mean there's nothing yet, that's just because uh, the distilled water in the anode chamber isn't very conductive, but pretty soon we should start to see some current on the uh, voltage and current meter. It's been a few minutes and finally we are actually able to see uh, it's a little bit tricky on camera, but uh, you can see some hydrogen coming off the cathode here. And uh, if I bring it out a little bit, you might be able to see a little bit of there we are, calcium hydroxide forming on the surface, which is very good, it means it's working. And uh, you probably can't see, but there are a few bubbles coming off the anode there, which is excellent. It means we're actually making some nitric acid over here. There you go, finally. We can see some tiny bubbles of oxygen gas coming off the anode there. Excellent. And would you look at that? The anode chamber is turning slightly acidic. That'll be the nitric acid. You can look at that, a couple of hours on, we've got half an amp flowing, and you can see we've generated a lot of calcium hydroxide and hopefully we've generated a lot of nitric acid in there. So like I said before, I'll leave this running overnight I think uh, just to generate as much nitric acid as we can and then we will we'll test it tomorrow. Finally, this has been running all night. I think it's time that we take out uh, the nitric acid that's been generated in the anode chamber and we'll test it. So I'll take out that little clay pot and filter out all of the acid and we should be good from there. So our nitric acid is filtering now, it's actually clearing up really really well. Um, you can see in the actual container itself we generated a lot of uh, calcium hydroxide so hopefully uh, that means we've generated a lot of nitric acid in here. Uh, you can see the electrodes, here's the, the anode kind of fell apart only the bit that was in the water, obviously. Uh, that's the end bit there. Um, and then we've got the cathode here, which is all coated in uh, calcium hydroxide. There's a lot of work, but now we do have about 60 milliliters worth of dilute nitric acid, I'm pretty sure. Um, the carbon powder did actually filter out really well. It looks really clear, so that's, that's good. And I've confirmed that it is, uh, well, very dilute nitric acid uh, from the fact that when we mix it with some hydrochloric acid, it'll, um, when you add copper to that mixture, uh, the, the mixture will turn green pretty much instantly. Uh, so 
obviously it's a strong enough oxidizer to oxidize copper because um, hydrochloric acid wouldn't dissolve copper that quickly by itself and uh, I managed to neutralize some of it with some sodium carbonate to make some sodium nitrate and uh, evaporated it down and then mixed it with some sugar and then uh, in lighting that on fire it burned quite nicely so I think we can safely say that we do have uh, not very much and not very concentrated at all but we do have some nitric acid here excellent I'm a little bit disappointed that it wasn't concentrated enough to dissolve copper on its own I did try but it's just there's just not enough nitric acid in there to actually dissolve copper but we did make nitric acid from just composting grass clippings so I think that's pretty cool honestly though uh, I'd, I wouldn't recommend this way of making nitric acid uh, just the yield is so low because this is really not very concentrated nitric acid maybe if you had some compost or anything really that had a, a higher nitrate content maybe this method would work better but I don't know the amount that I got is just not very much at all so maybe I'll find a different way of making nitric acid for uh, in the future if I need it so thank you for watching uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I certainly enjoyed making it uh, it's too bad we didn't get too much nitric acid at the end but that's just it uh, maybe for next year this is the uh, the compost bin where I got all of the um, the, the grass clipping compost from maybe for next year I might um, add some ammonium sulfate fertilizer just to add some nitrogen content to uh, the bin and then hopefully uh, by next year or something if I want to try this experiment again uh, by next year maybe we'll have made some uh, quite a large amount of nitrates in this bed which would be very useful seeing as I don't actually think there was very very much nitrate content in the compost bin to begin with and that might be uh, why it didn't work very well but till then see you later